on this totally gorgeous, wonderful day. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase serves as the sole trustee of the Dorothea and Lillian Gish Prize Trust. And on behalf of our firm, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 16th annual Gish Prize for Achievement in the Arts. My colleagues and I have the privilege of working with our clients on their charitable giving and on nurturing their philanthropic legacies. And Lillian Gish entrusted us with uh, the responsibility of fulfilling her donor intent, and that brings us to this special occasion. Each year, the Gish Prize ceremony is one of my favorite events because it's a celebration of art and beauty and community and an understanding of what's really important in life. And it honors the extraordinary artistic legacy of the Gish sisters. It focuses attention on an artist who's made the world a better place. And so when I learned this year that our selection committee uh, picked Pete Seeger, I couldn't think of a better person who deserved this honor. And when Pete uh, agreed to play some music and, and uh, share his singing with us, I was more than thrilled. And then when the program started to shape up to include the amazing Adam Green and the wonderful families and youth who are part of Rocking the Boat, you'll see that uh, there were rowing and lots of activity happening beforehand. Um, there'll be more of that after the ceremony. Um, you know, it just kept getting better and better with the phenomenal Toshi Regan and with the visionary Majora Carter. It's just uh, a really wonderful event. So with that uh, welcome, let me turn it over to my colleague, Ed Jones, who will guide us through uh, the ceremony. Thank you, good evening, and welcome again. Uh, as many of you know, when Lillian Gish died in 1993, she left the bulk of her estate in a trust uh, to establish the annual Gish Prize for Achievement in the Arts. And in her creative and thoughtful way, she allowed for the broadest possible definition of the arts, including her own field of film, but also dance, theater, literature, music. She was a visionary and knew that art forms by their very nature would change over time. She set very few conditions for the prize. Simply, she stipulated that the winner of her prize had, quote, made an outstanding contribution to the beauty of the world and mankind's enjoyment and understanding of life and it served as a model of encouragement to others. Now in its 16th year, the Gish Prize has supported the work of artists from all disciplines, earning more than $3 million to deserving recipients. I call your attention to the program where all previous prize winners and selection committee members are listed. We are enormously proud that they have been associated with the Gish Prize. As has been our practice for the past 16 years, a selection committee of five distinguished and respected members of the arts community was invited to choose the prize recipient. Their individual accomplishments are noted in your program copy, and we're fortunate to have two of them with us here tonight so that we may thank them for their hard work and dedication. We regret that our chairperson, Cora Khan, was unable to be with us this evening due to an unavoidable conflict, but I want to recognize her for her highly important role in this year's um, proceedings and event. And likewise, Michael Kaiser, president of the Kennedy Center, and choreographer Graciela Danielle were not able to attend. However, we are very pleased that Terrence McNally, playwright extraordinaire, and Lowry Stokes Sims, curator extraordinaire at the Museum of Arts and Design, are here with us. Please stand. Our thanks to you for the job well done. It, it was a tremendous pleasure working with both of you. Uh, and now it is my pleasure to welcome Linda Cox, who is Executive Director of the Bronx River Alliance and also Administrator of the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation uh, and perhaps even more important, responsible for 
the uh, beautification of this area over the past seven years and making it into what it is today for venues for all sorts of occasions and I think we all agree a very effective one. Uh, so I will now turn the podium over to Linda Cox. Um, I'm the Brooks River Administrator for the New York City Parks Department as well as Executive Director of the Brooks River Alliance. And I'm here to um, welcome you on behalf of uh, Commissioner Adrian Benepe who is caught in traffic and, and will probably manage still to join us in a few minutes. Um, he would tell you, I'm sure, that the Parks Department is tremendously proud of this gorgeous park. Hunts Point Riverside Park and of the wonderful work that ha the Parks Department has done um, with so many others to improve the Bronx River. But he would also be the first to tell you that the Parks Department could not do it alone and that we would not have this fabulous park. Uh, we wouldn't have this gorgeous river in the condition that it is today and so full of boats and people enjoying it if it weren't for the involvement of, of fabulous um, individuals and community-based organizations in the Bronx that have really brought it to life. Rocking the Boat is a fabulous example of that. Uh, Majora Carter is um, a fabulous example of really the discoverer of this land and the one who led the effort to reclaim this uh, one abandoned, neglected street end as a park. And I uh, should mention uh, really that I have seen Pete Seeger in the Bronx once before and that was at the Point CDC uh, reading a book if I remember correctly reading your book and singing with the kids from the Point and Rocking the Boat. Nothing could have been more appropriate because both of those organizations have been uh, so instrumental in what you see here today. Uh, congratulations to you. Welcome to all of you. I'm so glad to have you with us at the Bronx River. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I'm now pleased to introduce our first musical tribute of the evening, Toshi Regan, American folk blues musician. Toshi Regan first jumped into the spotlight when Lenny Kravitz invited her to open for him for his first world tour. And she has since shared the stage with performers ranging from Annie DeFranco to Elvis Costello, she and her band, Big Lovely, have been together since 1996, performing everywhere from small stages of rock clubs to the big stage at Carnegie Hall. Whether playing solo or with her band, her fusion of styles and forms excites and delights any and all audiences, wherever the venue may be. Please welcome Toshi Regan. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here um, celebrating, uh, uh, I don't know, celebrating all of us. And uh, uh, Pete is a perfect example of creating cycles, of taking something, having it run through you, your venue, you're just a venue for it, and then passing it on to something else. So it's just always continuing and always doing good. And so thank you for that. Uh, this is a song I wrote called Kindness because I just feel so appropriate to the uh, situation.
understand the commissioner is with us, and uh, I can't see. There he is. Uh, <laughs> come right over, Adrian. Um, Adrian Benefee, uh, Commissioner of New York City Department of Parks and Recreation. He's worked for nearly 30 years protecting and enhancing New York City's natural and historic beauty. Uh, he um, has continued the effort as Commissioner, appointed by Mayor Bloomberg in 2002, and has focused on improving park facilities and programs for children, developing new waterfront parks, greenways, and making New York City bloom with millions of new flowers and hundreds of gardens. So it's my pleasure to welcome Adrian Benepe. Thank you very much. Um, just sorry about the weather. Uh, just We've had this extraordinary run of late summer days, and it just makes you so happy that Labor Day decided to be really late this year because you can just keep summer coming. Um, I'm sorry I'm late. I was, um, believe it or not, in the southernmost point in New York State about an hour and a half ago, which is to say the south shore of Staten Island, and um, in Conference House Park, which is another great waterfront park. And, um, uh, you know, we thought we thought allowing an hour and a half to get from one end of the city to the other was going to be enough time, but it just wasn't. Uh, but got here, thank goodness. Um, I, I've had the great pleasure of knowing Pete um, for a long time, much longer than he remembers, because when the Clearwater first sailed, which I think was, was that 1969? Uh, I was on the maiden voyage with my father, Barry, who is the founder of the Green Markets. In fact, I was with Barry today, touring around Staten Island. And I remember that the cabin slept a lot of people. <laughs> that's, that's the impression you have when you're a kid. There are a lot of people sleeping in the cabin of the ship. Of course, I knew Pete's music, grew up on it, and still listen to it. And then I last saw Pete at the Little Red Lighthouse, where he walked in a long walk with his banjo slung over his shoulder like a weapon of peace that it is. So it's just so great to be here just to say, give the official welcome on behalf of the city uh, to this event and to uh, the honor, the great honor of having the Louis Gish Prize bestowed on Pete here at Hunts Point Riverside Park. Hunts Point Riverside Park, you should know, is the product of true grassroots organizing. Uh, people who lived here in the neighborhood thought it would be a good idea to con that this literal dump could be turned into a park, and it's Majora Carter and Sustainable South Bronx and a lot of neighborhood activists who led the city willingly, I should say, to this point. Sometimes we get led unwillingly. You know, the old uh, ring, and we all have rings in our noses, um, we who work in city government, um, so we can be led to places we might not want to go. But this place, this was a place of a case of total willingness. Uh, this is the Hunts Point didn't have a, any parks, and now it has this park and a much larger but also beautiful um, Point Beretta Point Park, which we built over the last few years. But we are here today because of the vision of community activists who said who saw the world as it could be, not the world as it was, and how, how great it could be. Um, the resulting work to create not just this park, but to green the entire Bronx River and to make it a resource and a living tributary of, of green, of transit, of recreation, of canoeing, of boating, as you see, of nature, of, of wildlife, is all coming to pass, and we didn't have to wait till one or two lifetimes to see it happen. It's really an extraordinary accomplishment, and all of these things that happen when rivers are restored, when boats are put back in the water, when kids learn to interact with the water instead of drowning in it, um, these are because we stand on the shoulders of giants, of people who long ago fought to clean up polluted waters and get people back onto the water. So. Um, the great work that the Bronx River Alliance is doing, which is led by Linda Cox and all her board members, continues. There's still a lot of work to do, uh, but already wildlife has returned to this river. The first otter since colonial days, not otter, I'm sorry, beaver. Uh, any otter? Maybe. Lots of muskrat, lots of wading birds, uh, herons and egrets and all that. And the alewives came back. Um, the alewives are coming back and we're going to build some ladders, fish ladders, 
and we're going to watch the fish climb those ladders and get over the waterfalls. They don't really climb, they swim up them. So all kinds of other things are happening. Uh, we're lucky to be part of it, that is, we the city, and so I'm just here to say on behalf of Mayor Bloomberg, who's uh, made it a very important part of city government to build parks and to take back the waterfront from 400 years of industrial claim. Um, this is just one of those, one more little accomplishment that has happened largely due to community activists. So thank you very much. What an honor to have Pete Seeger in Hunts Point Riverside Park. Adrian, again, thank you so much for the good work you do on behalf of all of us. And now I would like to turn the microphone over to my long-term friend, our Gish Prize Selection <laughs> Committee member, Lowry Stokes-Sims.